Okay, thank you. Um, wave at me when I'm running over time. Um, hello, I'm Hen Norton. Um, I co-founded We Did This in January 2011. Um, we Did This, just to give you a kind of background, is a crowdfunding uh, website set up for the arts. Now, a kind of overview of what is crowdfunding is, in my mind, getting lots of people to give a small amount of money to make up a larger amount that enables an artist or an organization to make and realize an idea and make something happen. And you do that in return for what is currently termed as rewards. <clears throat> now, I think what's been really interesting today and what Jane was talking about as well, which I really, really agree with is, what makes me, I think, different from other crowdfunding platforms out there is that I don't claim that a crowdfunding platform is the answer. Um, I see online platforms, this crowdfunding platforms, there are loads and loads of them out there. We did this isn't the only one. In fact, we've recently merged with um, people fund it. You know, we're not, we're not obsessed with our brand. We're not there to kind of try and say, we, I'm not here saying, use We Did This, we're by far and away the best um, crowdfunding platform there is. There are loads of them, they're developing all the time, they're getting better and better all the time. Um, but what they do, what I do feel about it, and what I do feel about We Did This is that what the big thing that we have focused on right from the beginning is audience, and are the people using our website, and um, who, why are they using it, and what's, what's their project? So, I'm going to start from the beginning. So, what happened was, Ed and I met, we co-founded it together. And Ed and I met and said to one another, why do we want to start, at this point, there weren't many crowdfunding platforms out there. And we said, why do we want to start a crowdfunding website? And Ed had come from a background where he'd worked in the civil service. And he wanted to be in a position where he could give money to the arts. But he didn't always want to give money to the same arts organizations or the same arts projects. And he didn't want to become a friend of something. But he wanted to be able to build a relationship with projects. He was excited by the arts, and he wanted to sort of explore different things. And I'd been working in the arts as a producer for about four years, doing kind of participatory arts stuff, working with lots of different audiences. And so we decided to create a space where artists could begin to promote their work, promote their ideas, and engage with their audiences, and communicate with their audiences. So one of the things that I think about crowdfunding, which I brought over from when I was working as a producer, and what I learned from, I used to work with Artichoke, which is, uh, did the Plinth project, the Gormley Plinth project, did the Elephant. And one of the big things that I believe about crowdfunding is it's not just about the money. So I think people have sort of gone, OK, there's crowdfunding platforms. This is how we can access money. This is how we solve the problems of funding cuts in the arts. Crowdfunding isn't just about the money. It's about providing a way for you as artists to communicate your ideas, market your ideas um, right from the start. So when you conceive of an idea, what I think needs to happen is there are three strands. And what often happens with the arts is you sort of, you have an idea, then you think, how am I going to fund this idea? And then you think, right, I need to communicate and market this idea. But actually, what crowdfunding platforms enable you to do is to do all of that from day one and to think about that from day one. So you need to think, I've got this great idea. How do I communicate that to people? How do I make people as excited about my idea and who am I talking to? And who is my audience? And why are they going to give me something back for that? And then you need to think about what tools you're going to use to communicate it. And crowdfunding platforms, and we did this, for example, provides a platform for you to do that. It provides a series of tools. But it's no good trying to use those tools if you're not thinking about the problems you're trying to solve behind this. And what I promote to artists is about recognizing the value in the process of making and what you have to offer. 
So the reason we came up with this idea of having rewards, what you're saying to people is, if you give us a small amount of money, we will give you something back. Now, people often say to me, and I've heard this right from the start when we started, why would you put so much effort into running a crowdfunding campaign when you know, you're only going to get £1,000 at the end of the day, perhaps? You know, the most we've raised when we did this is £10,000 for one project. But the majority of people go for around £1,000, £2,000. You do have to put the effort in. If you put a project up on the website at the beginning of the month, and you come back a month later, and you haven't done anything, and you haven't talked to anyone, you're not going to have a magical thousand pounds there at the end of it. You've got to put the work in, plan your campaign in advance. You have to run a campaign. It's like any other campaign. It's like any other promotion. You have to think about it. You have to talk to the people. And you have to say to yourself, who is my audience? Who's going to be excited in this idea? And why? And what can I offer them? So, but what for me, it's not, as I've said earlier, it's not just about the money. It's not about that thousand pounds at the end. It's about by communicating and by running this campaign and talking to your audience, you're developing your idea and you're also evidencing want and need. And you're actually saying before you start making work, who wants to see this? You can then use that information to leverage more funds further on. You can then go and talk to funding bodies and to other kind of larger giving philanthropists and say, look, 100 people have got behind this, given me 10 pounds, and they've said they want to see this happen. And that's what crowdfunding platforms provide, I think, and enable you to kind of do that R&D work, make that happen. Um, so rewards, the whole notion of rewards, again, people say, why would I want to offer? You know, what can I offer? It's going to cost money. I don't want to have to pay. You know, what's the point of fundraising if I've got to give something back? You know, and what it's about looking at is it's about saying to artists, in order to communicate the value of your work, in order to ask people for money, you need to recognize the value in your own work. And you need to be able to kind of unpack that and present that to people. So, for example, rewards need cost you nothing and they need to take up not that much of your time. They need to become part of the process of making. What you're doing, basically, is you're opening the window to your audience and saying, you know, normally what you show an audience, often if you run a theatre or, you know, they see the final piece, they come to the show, they buy the tickets, they see the thing, they see the film, whatever it is you've made. But actually what you for people forget as artists is you hold an incredibly exciting thing to your chest that actually people would pay to be part of and people would feel more fulfilled by being part of this process. So, for example, you might, if you're a theatre company, um, offer as rewards that people can come to a reading in advance or they can have a Twitter conversation with the director or you know you can you can and in doing that what you're also doing as artists is you are opening up a dialogue and a conversation with your audience that enables your work to grow and expand and your creativity to be kind of enriched by that relationship. Um, people also often say oh well it's all very well talking about crowdfunding in terms of you know, participatory work, but how do you talk about it if you're a solo artist? And the example I always give is a man called Nick Hunt, who is an incredible artist who ran a project and we did this. And his project was to walk across Europe. He found, he had a poem that he had seen, and it had been written sort of 16th century, about this journey across Europe. And um, he was going to t go on this journey himself, and he was going to rewrite this piece, but from today's point of view. And he raised over a thousand pounds when we did this. He exceeded his target. And his offer of rewards was actually postcards. So what he did, although actually it's very, very hard to see in that why anyone would give you any money because there's a really hard, it's really hard to understand how someone would participate in that work. What he did was he opened up a way for his solitary journey across Europe for you to be part of it and for you to actually get updates as he went along the way. 
And it was hugely successful, the idea of getting postcards. Another really successful reward was um, we worked with Klaus Klopp Company, who were actually our first project who went up on the site with us. And they raised the most. They raised £10,000. But what they did was they were recording Mozart's first ever opera, and they wanted to make a recording of it. And again, that's quite hard. You know, you might be able to go to the recording or you might get a free CD at the end, but it's quite hard to think about how someone could participate in that. And what they did was they offered a bar of the music for £10. You could sponsor a bar of the music. And if you sponsored a bar of this music, you just sign into your email and it played it to you or it played a series of bars. And people became really, really excited by this. So the reason I'm talking about this is... For me, the, this digital platform, this use of how we apply these platforms to the arts, they're not, they're not um, something that replaces human interaction. I personally, despite having run a website for the past 18 months, as I say, I need to engage with people. And I believe that the arts needs to continue to engage in real life with people. I'm not advocating putting everything online. But what I see is that you can use crowdfunding platforms as a tool to, um, to access your audiences. Another thing you can do is you can look at what I think do it using a crowdfunding platform enables you to do. So the way it works is just to sort of, if you were to put a project up, you have your project pitch up there which forces you to think about 200 words of how you are going to say to someone who's never heard of your idea, get excited about this. You then make a short film, which again says, this is why you should be excited, this is what we're trying to do, this is how much money. You come up with this series of rewards, but you also will have kind of Twitter, so you're communicating with your audiences through that. You'll have your Facebook. You know, you'll be using all those communication tools that everyone's probably using now. But what it forces you to do is to think about your project and think, who is my audience in this situation? And maybe you want a new audience. So Orchestra Age of Enlightenment did a project with us. And they wanted to start doing um, classical gigs in pubs. And they were looking at how they could actually, you know, take this trad very traditional form of music out into a much more public space and actually get people behind it and excited about it. So one of the things they were looking at was, you know, you, of course, you have to access your existing audiences. You're not going to get 100 random people who've never heard of you funding you if you are on zero when you start. You need to get your friends, families, greatest fans to put a bit of money in there first. But you can also start to think about, OK, I want to build a younger audience, or I want to build an audience in this area of the country. Or, and you can then target via these rewards, target by what you're offering those people, and then start talking to them about it. I also recently, I was um, speaking somewhere, and someone had said before I was speaking, um, oh, crowdfunding's just a, a version of shaking a tin outside a tube station. You know, they put the money in, they go away, and that's the end of it. And I wanted to stand up and scream, because it's, it's all about thinking about these sustain, how you sustain these relationships and how you build on it. And that is down to the artists and the organisation themselves. And I do think that what we need to start doing is we not, need to start thinking about where our money comes from and where, why people fund. So it's no good saying, you know, there's been all these funding cuts and we can't get any money anymore. It's, an, it's a complete pain, but it's fact. And it's about thinking about, OK, well, how can we build relationships with people where they will keep coming back? And what can, how can we show people why making art costs money? And how, what can we offer them? And how can we bring them into that? Because people aren't just going to keep handing over money unless they feel that they're involved or they're being enriched by it. And I think that it's about... Crowdfunding provides almost a structure or a strategy for you to use or to, to then form a campaign around how to do this. Um, so, I, and I also think the other really important thing about it, which I have touched on already, is about is evidencing want and need. 
So it's really, really, you know, when we all fill in applications, when people fill in applications for the Arts Council or for public funding bodies, they say to them, can you, you know, we all have to evidence want and need of our projects before we've done them. This is almost impossible to do, and we all kind of sort of fudge that section of the, the application form. What crowdfunding does it is it provides you with an answer to that as well, you know, and we are talking to um, Arts Council and other public funding bodies about how actually it can form part of an overall fundraising strategy. It can form part of a, you know, a longer term thing. If you can only get a thousand pounds from it, what can you then, who can you find to match fund if you can reach that? Who can you appeal to beyond that? So you can think it's not a kind of solution on its own necessarily either. Um, the other thing is that microphilanthropy and where microphilanthropy is going, I have recently, we did this, as I say, as merged with People Fund It. And we've done that because we recognize that People Fund It, um, it's run by, you know, it's Keo Films, it's Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, they have an enormous network of people behind them, they have an enormous audience. And it made much more sense to us to merge with them and we're still on the steering committee, and we're still on the board, and we're still helping run it, but because they have that audience. And the hardest thing about crowdfunding platforms is finding a way to scale. And it's all about the numbers. And you know, yeah, you look at Kickstarter from the States, and it's huge, and it works. But it work their whole mentality towards philanthropy is different from ours. It is a completely different thing. And we need to start, I mean, whether you like it or not, the UK and Europe's got to start thinking about this kind of individual micro-philanthropy idea a bit more and this idea that everyone can be a philanthropist. And I think so what I'm now moving into is looking actually at going and talking to people, talking to artists on the ground, talking to communities about how they can collaborate with one another, how they can engage their audiences, what techniques and tools they can use to use these platforms and to start looking at new ways of building these networks. Because I think there is a gap, and I think that there's this danger with the digital where we kind of assume, okay, right, we've created this platform, this app, whatever it is, that solves the problem. But I completely understandably, people don't instinctively know how to use this stuff or how best to benefit from it. And so I think it is really important to remember that when you're looking at what digital tools you're going to use, thinking about why you're using them, who's using them, and the benefits you want from them, and making sure that you've got a really clear sense of that, um, and making sure your audience has a really clear sense of that as well, um, rather than assuming they're the solution, which is sort of what Jane touched on as well. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I'm getting that sign. So I'm going to wind up and do just ask questions because there's lots that I've left out.